Max Lockmeister fan, judge by day, butcher by night. It's violent bloodbath. Let's watch. Our film starts with a newspaper headline, a mysterious money order, the French murderer Jacques Moore, who killed the whole family to rob them, receiving a money order three years after dying. Something to that effect. Fernando Ray plays Oscar Batille. Marissa Mel plays his wife, Patricia. Sometimes you're unbearable. About a 20-year age difference between them. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you later. Morning. Good morning. Judge Bataille of the French courts. Has there been an investigation yet about the disappearance of a family which lived near the main road? Disappeared. I imagine you might have news. The judge had given this woman named Laura a ride and they drove past this house. Turns out there's a bunch of dead bodies in that house. One more body. It's not possible. You knew about it? It's like the place Morel committed his crimes in France. He recognizes as a copycat killing from somebody he sent to the death penalty years ago. I was worried about you. I haven't found an explanation right here. There's a money holder tries to check mine. I read about it. I imagine some prank. I believe that's a former lover dead. of his wife. I believe you personally sent him to the guillotine. Jack Morel never did the guillotine. Yes, and bored with this writer's pedantry. He seems to think because he's writing about trials of mine, he can treat me without any respect. You're much too touchy, Oscar. His house. Her name's Laura. You mean you know Laura Castro? I know her. Are you suspicious only because she's been living there? I myself plan to tell that to the inspector. Always a forgiving and understanding. I can stand it. Don't think he pardons him easily if you were on the bench under accusation. For reasons I can't fathom, there is a contest, a lobster eating contest featuring women in bikinis. Ladies, please, and make haste. Go! Fine, come on! I have to go now. I love him. I can't help it. Let's leave it like it is. It was very nice going back to the past, but it was a dream. We see a flashback to one of the judges, uh, Criminals that he sentenced to the guillotine. That's Laura again. But I feel pretty lost. That they think I murdered that poor family. This is our next victim. The next day a maid finds the body. Six years ago in Paris, Marietta Fiamma was murdered in exactly the same way as the telephone operator. As you can check with this complete documentation of the case I have here. No. I this is another flashback to the I'm judge. I'm murdered for murder's sake. I'm upset at violence. I'm modest. I respect the loss. I'm punctual into my obligations. And innocent. The majority of all human beings need to think they're innocent for their self-respect, of course. Patricia's going to stumble upon another body. She recognizes the scarf or whatever that is around him as being something that's hers. And since she didn't do it, perhaps her husband did? Oscar! No, it's the 
the first time I laid eyes on it. I swear I never saw it. I didn't murder. What did the wife were doing? She now suspects her husband, so she's gonna burn the evidence. In the bidet. He seems to have no memory of their conversation earlier. Well, we have some rest. I must leave immediately. Last night they killed Doran. But it seems impossible. The man was killed with my foulard. I discovered a body and then took the foulard away. When I went back to my room, it was terrible. He didn't even recognize me. He, he talked to me as if I was him and he was the accused. Hang up. I said, hang up, dear. We must be incommunicado here, without exceptions, Patricia. Find him. Good night. He had another Go. flashback. This tribunal taking into consideration the recommendations of the jury and Trisha realizes she's in danger. Oui. Yes, it's me. Oh, Williams, come immediately. I'm in danger. Yes, I'm with him. Yes. No! Come Don't you have that back of you? He appears to have multiple personalities, and this is the murderous one. Why did you do it? But he doesn't drop them. He stabs himself. And that's our film. The headline reads Oscar Bataille, French attorney, died under strange circumstances. Okay, let's talk about this movie called Violent Bloodbath. Um, the title's a little misleading here. What it says here is Judge by Day, Butcher by Night, and there's this violent image on the cover there, which is not in the movie, by the way. What we have here is an Italian film. It's kind of a giallo uh, type. Um, no nudity in this movie. There is some violence. However, there's not really a lot of gore because most of the violence that we see happens off screen, and then we see kind of the aftermath. Um, it's a basically simple plot here about... Uh, there's a series of murders that are going on in this town, and uh, they seem to be copycat murders. And this judge um, realizes that these copycat murders are, they're basically copying murderers that he sentenced to death previously. In other words, he sent this, <coughs> excuse me, he sent this one guy to death for murdering uh, a few people. And uh, the murders that are now happening are basically a copycat of that murderer's murders. So because he was the judge in this case, he recognizes all of these things. Uh, and basically a um, an investigation takes place. Ultimately, it turns out, uh, of course, it's a spoiler there, reading the box cover, the judge is the one doing the murders. Although he seems to be living like a d double life, like he's bipolar or something because he doesn't seem to realize what he's doing um he has a wife who's about 20 years younger than him played by a, a lovely actress named marissa mel and uh she begins to suspect something because she found one of the bodies and it, there was like this scarf or something that she recognizes hers i think and uh she recognized it on the body and she swiped it off the body and then she confronted her husband with it who seemed to be out of his mind and not knowing what was going on so she decided to burn the evidence but later on the husband found a piece um near the end of this movie though the husband is about to kill his wife, and then uh, I think it's a former lover of hers uh, comes in, and uh, or was it a former lover? I don't know, but it's, uh, somebody comes in and stops it from happening, and then the husband 
basically slices himself, uh, stabs himself with some scissors, and the wife goes to him, embraces him, starts crying, and then he, we see a bunch of blood pouring down, and it actually comes out of his leg, like, in, into his sock and his foot and stuff. That was kind of a cool scene, and that's kind of how our movie ends. So, anyway, I'd never seen this movie before. I have a, uh, a pre-recorded VHS of this. It's like in those, one of those big uh, clamshell boxes. Picked it up somewhere. I have no idea where. It must have been like a used store or something like that, because it has a great title, obviously, but never watched it until today, actually, and uh, I don't think I missed much. It's not all that uh, engrossing of a film. Uh, could have used some nudity, especially from that lead actress who was a, a lovely lady. Um, and it's just kind of slow, actually, and, and not not a great pace of this movie. But uh, it was okay, just nothing special. But the best thing about this movie is the title itself and, of course, the box art there. Not available on DVD. The real original title is uh, Pina de Muerte. Um, I may have burned a DVD from the... Um, uh, DVD-R from the VHS that I have made some box art here, so looks kind of cool, but that's the coolest thing about it. So anyway, check it out. Let me know if you've seen this little thing. Uh, it's called Violent Bloodbath. Watch it. Bye. Or don't watch it. It's not worth it.